Hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at a solitaire card game called For Northwood. And as it says right there, it's a solo trick-taking game. In this one, you are attempting to rally these leaders for Northwood, trying to convince them to throw in with you, to work uh, with you, and you do so by selecting their kingdom, choosing to play cards in sort of a trick-taking style against the deck, and winning an exact number of tricks. If you win too many or too few, then that leader no longer is interested in working with you and they go away. And you see if you can convince enough of them to win the entire game. Let me show you how this works. So here's the game set up in introductory mode in which I begin with these four allies and these characters are randomized as the rulers of these various kingdoms. But if you want to step it up once you've played the game a few times, then you will randomize which allies you begin, one in each of these four suits, and you will randomize the characters up here, two for every suit. So here we've got some more, and you just shuffle them all up and start dealing them out. The first one of a suit that shows up, that's your ally. Two more will show up somewhere up here. And you set the rest aside, but these are a little more advanced, so they recommend you don't use them yet. Then you will shuffle up the deck of cards, which has four suits numbered one through eight, and you are ready to begin. So what you are trying to do is convince these rulers to throw in with you for Northwood. And if you manage to do so, you will lower the character like so, so that you are earning the victory points for that character. The objective, this is normal mode, is 16 points. So for example, if I convince the King of Claws here to work with me and become my, uh, uh, you know, become allied with me, then I will be earning three points for that. The number at the bottom is how many tricks I need to win exactly for that character to be an ally of mine, all right? So each round goes like this. I'm gonna shuffle up the deck. I give myself a hand of eight cards. Two, four, six, eight. I will set the deck here like so. And then I will take a look at my hand of cards and I will select who I'm going to try to convince to work with me. So let's take a look here. Um, the characters have a suit, and if I choose to attempt for them, that suit, their suit, is trump for this hand. So for right now, I have a lot of these. That might be a good one to perhaps try for the very king of claws I was talking about. Because I have a lot of cards that are in his suit, I might be able to win six tricks. And I, like I said, I have a hand of eight. I can also, if I've previously convinced someone to work with me, let's say I convinced... Uh, Queen of Leaves here to work with me, I could, before I start, after I've looked at my hand and decided who I want to go for, I could bring her down and cover up one of these so that I have her ability for this round. Whether I use it or not, though, in this upcoming play, and you'll see that in a second, uh, she will go away. And so I'll set her aside. I still have my, uh, for Northwood points there, but I would lose her ability. I can do it once, whether and I can bring it down whether I used it or not. So, right now, obviously, beginning the game, I don't have anyone else except these four characters here. And I am ready to begin. So a hand goes like this. The very first thing I may do is I can utilize one of these powers, exhausting them and triggering their ability. These four beginning ones are draw two cards, then discard two. If I'm holding fewer than eight cards, draw up to eight. Exchange the ruler of this thief with a, another neutral ruler up to two away. So switch two. And this one here is discard all the cards matching the current ruler's suit. A good way to get rid of some winning cards, possibly. If I'm going for someone that requires a specific number of tricks, that's pretty low. Again, I need to win exactly that many tricks. If I'm off even by one, I do not claim that person. They will instead go away, and I lose this location, so I'll never get the victory points on it. So, um... We simply then, if I don't want to use one of these, or I use one of them, then the next thing is flipping over a card, and this means that this character is beginning a conversation with me. And this is the card they play. I must follow suit, if at all possible. Uh, in this case, I cannot follow suit, so I have a choice to make. I can lose, and I can play any off-suit card that is not Trump, and I simply discard it here to the discard pile. Or... I can trump in on this one because I don't have the suit. 
and I put it on this side, which means I've won one trick. And this is how you'll track the tricks you've won. There we go. That's one play. We go to the next play. And again, I can choose to use one of these characters. I'm going to hold off on that for right now. I draw a card, I play it, I have to follow suit, and I lose that one. I'm going to continue. I'm going to draw a card, that's the one they're playing. I no longer have that suit, so I can trump in, and I win that one. I'm going to continue. Draw that, don't have it, I'll trump in again. That's three I've been able to win. Okay, that one I'm going to have to lose, because I have to follow suit. And now I come to an interesting moment here where I think I'm going to go ahead and utilize this power before I flip again. I'm going to draw two cards, and then I'm going to discard two. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm going to discard these two. I should be able to, unless they have a particularly high trump, be able to win the next three here. So let's see what happens. Oh, well, I flip that over. I'm going to have to do that. Um, and now my only option, if I want to get to six, is to... I'm going to go ahead and utilize this character, draw up to eight, and see what happens here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to keep going. Again, I can only use one of these, even if I wanted to do multiple things at once. They have to be broken up by, uh, by a card flip. So I'll go ahead and do that. That's a winning... that's not great, because I was hoping for that to be a dead card, but that's a win. I'm at four right now. I'm going to go ahead and go again. That's also a winning one. Uh, at this point, I have another choice to make. I could choose to do this one, discard all cards that match the current ruler's suit. So... hmm... Let's flip over one more here. I'm going to lose that there. I have right now five tricks. I'm going to flip over again. I'm going to lose that also. I'm going to flip over again. I'm going to lose that. I'm going to flip over again. I'm going to lose that. I'll flip over one more time. I'm going to win that. And now I'm going to activate this. This one here, discard all cards that match the current ruler's suit. I'm out. And I was able to win six tricks. So I correctly um, got six uh, tricks won there. And I've influenced the King of Claws to work with me for Northwood. There we go. Now that I'm done, if I was able to get it correctly, like I said, I win them. Otherwise, they would have gone away. I flipped that over. I'm going to shuffle up all these cards again. Uh, and ready everyone else, and give myself a new hand of eight. Select who I want to try for now that I haven't tried for yet. After doing so, I can choose to bring down the King of Claws and cover up anybody I want. Um, have their power available to me for one go. And uh, this continues until I've gone through all eight, and then I'll count up the victory points. And if I got to 16 at least, I win. The ones in the middle are only a point apiece. They're fairly easy to get. The ones on the extremes are much harder. They'll be four points apiece. If I win seven out of the eight, or no tricks whatsoever. Very challenging. You have to be very tricky with that. So there we go. Um, and... That's largely it. I'm going to shuffle this up now and, and try again for the next one. Each of the hands is over, by the way, either when I'm out of cards or the deck is out of cards. That should do it. All right, so let me start by mentioning the components here. Uh, the look of the game is completely adorable. And in fact, it might be too adorable because it looks like it's uh, it uses illustrations that look straight out of a very young child storybook. The kind where the pages are the thick cardboard, you know, a flip book. And while I like it, I think it's, again, really, really cute. I do worry that folks are going to take a look at this and go, wow, this is really young. Like, it trends incredibly young. It does say age 12 and up on it, so that should do it. You know, if you, as long as you pick this up and look at it, you go, okay, not that young. But um, the illustrations are incredibly adorable and perhaps a little divisive if you don't want them to look uh, this cute, you know, this young. I like them a lot. I think it works really well for the game. And the story in the game is very 
child, you know, flip book uh, sort of like, uh, in which you are, you know, trying to have these conversations with the rulers. That's what the tricks represent. Trying to convince them to work with you, you know, uh, respond to their statements, maybe divert the conversation. If they say something, you can divert it to their favorite topic, i.e. their Trump suit. And then they're like, yeah, let's talk about that. So I think that's very nice. That's the artwork. The cards are superb. These are plastic cards. The entire deck is very hefty. Uh, plastic cards are always very heavy. Shuffling incredibly well. They uh, seem to be really, really durable. I just, I like plastic cards and these are fantastic. Great snap, good feel, shuffle very nicely. So, no complaints when it comes to the components at all. Now, gameplay. I was not sure what to expect here from a one-player trick-taking game. But I can safely say I was blown away by how well this works, how interesting it is, how engaging gameplay is, and the amount of tactics that this game presents. They did a very nice job telling you how to set up the first game, where they're like, okay, you take these four allies, the, the jacks, um, and then the other ones, the ones without a little crown in the corner, those are your starting ones. You can randomize those, but those are your starting ones. Great, lovely, fantastic way to present the game. But then once you've played the game a few times and you can just shuffle up all those characters and do that setup randomly, what you end up with and the play and who you are able to convince to work for you and then at some point choose to bring them down to actually aid you with their ability for one round. It's just very, very clever and works so well. It's so, it's such a fantastic mix of intricate and simple that I don't know how the game manages to nail that, you know, um, of being both thinky, of having these, you know, it's sort of dancing on the razor's edge sort of feeling, but also be very straightforward. You know, it's like, use a character if you want to, flip a card, follow suit, and then you see if you won that trick or you didn't. I really, really like that. So, yeah, this is one that, like I said, both the look, the idea, the gameplay surprised me. I was not sure I was going to enjoy it. Uh, I was hoping I would enjoy it because it's one that had caught my eye, but it just manages to be something fresh, engaging, light, easy to play, but thinky in a good way. Not like ponderous thinky, but like, ooh, should I draw back up to eight cards in my hand and see if I can get there? I might be overshooting. So there's that little bit of push your luck in it as well. Uh, very, very much enjoy it. This one is an easy recommendation from me, and it gets a very high score. I'm coming in at a 9 for this one, folks. If you enjoy small solitaire games, which is absolutely my jam, this is my kind of solo game, then I think you're really going to enjoy this one. You like trick-taking, you like those ideas, you like characters with special powers, and you want something that is quick, attractive, very well made, and doesn't take up too much room on the table, then this is going to be a good solo game for you. That's where I'm at. I don't want the sprawling solitaire game that takes two hours, and a lot of people do, but this is not my type of solo. This is my type of solo game right here. Fantastic. Nine out of ten. Absolutely love it. And it's an easy, easy recommend for me. So there you go. That is for Northwood, everybody. Thanks very much for watching the video. My name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one.